Hi, I'm Rachel and I'm back with another cookie jar case, case number five. Today we're going to talk about the missing girl, Isabella Kalua, but I'm going to refer to her as Ariel Sellers. And I'm wearing purple today because purple was Ariel's favorite color. And so we're going to wear purple. I'm going to wear purple. Isabella Kalua was born Ariel Sellers. On November the 6th, 2014, to Adam Sellers and Melanie Joseph. I'm going to refer to her as Ariel since that was her birth name, and I feel her adopted parents should have never changed this poor baby's name. She has four sisters. Her parents, Melanie and Adam, both struggled with drug addiction, and at one time they lived with relatives in Wamanalo. But later, they became homeless and they could no longer care for their children. At present, Sellers is in the Drug Rehabilitation Center and Melanie's mom, Barbara Kuma, she took in her biological granddaughter, Ariel Sellers, and Ariel's older sister, who is now 12. She took them in in 2017 when they were ages two and eight. She had just lost her own son to cancer. DHS Child Welfare Services allowed Kuma to keep her two grandchildren until late 2018 when her boyfriend got into a serious motorcycle accident. Kuma said, the social worker said she didn't want me to get overwhelmed. Every time she came to visit, I had just come home from the hospital and I was tired. The social worker arrived one morning and took the children a block away to the Kalua's house. Kuma said, she should have given me a chance. I wanted to try. You don't know how many times I called her and left messages. I felt something wasn't right. Kuma said she thought the decision to move the children may have even been because of her own past. She had been in drugs as well. Six months after Ariel and her sister were placed with the Kaluas, Kuma said the same social worker returned to her house with the children. Kuma said she was told that Lahua Kalua was under investigation and they asked Kuma if found guilty if I would like to take them back. I said yes. But then suddenly the investigation is over and everything's okay. That was the end of my visits. Ariel and three of her sisters remained in the care of Isaac, who is also known as Sonny Kalua III, and his wife Lehua, and they were their foster children. One of Ariel's sisters lived with a relative. In January of this year, Lahua and Sunny adopted Ariel and two of her sisters. One child, the youngest, remained a foster child and was not adopted. Ariel's sisters are a one-year-old, a three-year-old, a five-year-old who resides with a relative, and then Ariel's older sister who is 12. During the 2020-2021 school year, Ariel was enrolled in kindergarten at Waimanalo Elementary, and she was in distance learning. However, in June of 2021, her adoptive parents filed paperwork to withdraw her and homeschool her. Even if I didn't know how this case ended, I'd still think that looks weird. When your child is distance learning, everything is provided for you. Your curriculum is provided, all the grading is done for you. So, so for a parent to withdraw their child from remote learning, which is done at home anyway, to homeschool and have to provide, if you're doing it correctly, have to provide curriculum and actually grade their work yourself, it doesn't make sense. That really should have raised some red flags. A couple other alarming things worth mentioning. In October 2019, Ariel had a broken finger. There was a delay in both reporting the injury 
and getting treatment for this poor baby girl. Her family said she slammed her hand in the door. Just four months later, in January of 2020, Ariel suffered a broken leg. She was taken to the ER and her family this time blamed it on an incident on a trampoline. Her biological mom, Melanie Joseph, who's 33, told the Honolulu Star Advertiser the last time that she had seen her daughter on a scheduled visit was about a year ago. And she alleges there were signs of physical abuse. I don't know if she reported that to CWS. I did not see that anywhere, but I hope she did. A neighbor who declined to be identified said Ariel rarely came out on the sidewalk or the street to play. The neighbor recalled only once when the little girl and one of her sisters did come out and they said, hi, auntie. On September the 13th, the Kaluas called 911 at 6 a.m. to report Ariel as missing. The couple said she had either wandered off or was abducted and that she had a habit of wandering off at night to sleep in the yard. They said they had last seen Ariel in her bed and she was wearing a black hoodie, black leggings, colorful socks, and Nike slides with pink bottoms. Wearing shoes to bed seems strange, but before I knew how the story ended and I heard them say that, I thought, well, we keep shoes by the door sometimes, and so it was probably just a pair of shoes that was kept by the door, and if the shoes were missing, then Ariel probably had them on to go out of the house. That's what I had thought. Ariel's biological family started a massive search for the missing child. Police, family, friends, and volunteers hiked, walked, drove around the neighborhood. They began at sunrise to look for Ariel. Her family, her biological family, said they're not giving up hope. Think positive. That's all we can do is think positive and keep going and going and going until we hear something, Ariel's aunt. Lana Adeo said. At Wamanalo District Park, a map of Wamanalo is posted and volunteers note which areas they already come through. Adeo says the U.S. Coast Guard is searching at sea while Department of Land and Natural Resources has drones in the air. A new method that was introduced to prevent doubling up and searching the same areas is that volunteers are given purple ribbons and they tie it onto different branches as they search in the different areas. The Kaluas never helped search for their missing child. Sonny Kalua told the Associated Press Thursday that he and Lehua Kalua adopted the girl in January. We're instructed by the detectives from day one that we are not supposed to talk to reporters, he said. They also claimed to have received death threats. If my baby girl was missing, a death threat would not keep me from looking for her. But whatever, a photo album and a garbage bag containing shoes and toys were found what? on Thursday afternoon, September 16th, in the canal at Bellows Air Force Station. The Kaluas were initially cooperative, and then eventually they weren't, said Lieutenant Dina Themes. She said they began not returning our calls. Clues about the Kaluas mindset provided by the FBI's Behavioral Analysis Unit helped move the investigation forward. After the extensive search for Ariel was suspended, the case went from a missing child to a murder investigation focused on the Kaluas. Police said they think Ariel had in fact been killed as long as a month before the missing person report, according to Ben Moskowitz. 
He's a senior Honolulu police officer. Police began searching the Kalua's home as well as the Pearl Harbor shipyard where Isaac Kalua worked. These children really should have never been put into the care of Sonny and Lahua. Sonny pled guilty on January 3rd, 2001 to account one count of first degree terroristic threatening, two counts of second degree assault, and one count of attempted second degree assault. He was given five years probation. Lahua Kalua, formerly known as Lahua Kanahil, she was indicted in 2000 for felony drug promotion. After completing a two-year drug court program, the charge was dismissed in 2002. Advocates also say a criminal record alone should have kept the Kaluas from adopting the children, and the kids could have been placed with biological relatives. One of my concerns is there are apparently competent, available, volunteer members of the biological family who are willing to take these children and who were willing to take the children before they were placed with the Kalua family, said paralegal child advocate <coughs> Steve Lane. Taryn Napoleon, <coughs> Melanie Joseph's cousin, said Ariel's paternal <coughs> grandmother, Julie Harding, a licensed clinical social worker, wants to provide a home for her grandchildren who were removed from the Kalua home. They were removed after Ariel went missing. And she's reached out to child welfare to get her grandbabies. She was never even notified that they were taken into custody. She never had the opportunity to get them. For a 30-year veteran in the human services field, it's kind of sad. She should have had the opportunity. Ariel's adoptive mom, 43-year-old Lehua Kalua, was arrested at her Waimanalo home on Wednesday, November the 10th, and charged with second-degree murder in connection with Ariel's disappearance. Ariel's adoptive dad, 52-year-old Isaac Kalua was arrested at Building 167 at Pearl Harbor on Wednesday. He has also been charged with second-degree murder. The couple is being held without bail. Investigators allege the couple murdered Kalua in mid-August, a whole month before she was reported missing. Police claim the clue has lied in their initial report, saying they last saw Ariel on September 12th, a day before she was reported missing. The police said that Ariel was not seen on any surveillance footage after August 18th. And that's how they came to the conclusion that the Kaluas had lied and that Ariel did not go missing on September 13th. But instead, she was murdered around August 18th. There is a precious hero to this story. The police were on to these horrible, vile people. But a young girl who was told to hold a dark secret that her precious baby sister had been abused, tortured, and starved. This sister is a hero because she courageously came forward to tell the horrific events that took place in the Kalua home. Better word is prison, actually. So I'm going to read the interview with Lahua, Sunny, and then Big Sister is what I'm gonna call her, that was conducted after Ariel went missing. Lahua and Sunny's stories differ in an area that would reveal deception, not a lack of memory. On September 13th, 2021, at approximately 3.38 p.m., Detective Ron Kayo conducted a recorded interview with Lahua. Lahua provided the following information to Detective Kayo regarding the events of September the 12th, 2021, and September 13th, 2021. This is her words. 
On the evening of September 12, 2021, they ate dinner together, after which the girls played for a while. They went riding to get out of the house, but did not stop anywhere. Ariel seemed fine with no issues and no tantrums and went to bed at approximately 9 p.m. wearing a hoodie and leggings, which she normally wore to sleep. Lehua went to her room at about the same time, but she returned to Ariel's room approximately 20 minutes later and saw that she was asleep. Lehua woke up between 5.50 a.m. and 6 a.m. on September 13th and discovered the side door of the house was closed but unlocked. She then went to Ariel's and the 12-year-old sister's shared room where she observed the 12-year-old was asleep in her bed but Ariel wasn't there. Lehua woke Big Sister up and asked her where Ariel was. But Big Sister stated she didn't know. Lehua further stated that Big Sister is a heavy sleeper. They then searched both the interior and exterior of the house, but were unable to locate Ariel. Isaac then left the kids to drive around the area while Lehua called the police. Lehua further stated that a neighbor said she saw a silver car leaving the driveway at around 1 a.m., but the neighbor thought it was a family member of the Kaluas. Lehua stated, lately Ariel's been going outside of the house every day or every other day, and she would say, She's waiting for her mom to come and get her. On September the 20th, at about 2.04 p.m., a recorded interview was conducted with Isaac, who was read his constitutional rights in the presence of his attorney, William Harrison, after which he agreed to waive his rights and provide a statement. Isaac related the following information. He could not recall exact times or details, but remembered that on September the 12th, 2021, Lehua took big sister and younger sister out in their Lexus while he stayed home with Ariel and baby sister. Lehua returned in the afternoon with the two girls and they ate. He last saw Ariel at approximately 7 p.m. in the kitchen with Lehua. He went to bed sometime between 8 p.m. and 8.30 p.m. He did not wake up until around 6.30 a.m. on September the 13th when he heard Lahua screaming that Ariel was missing. After checking around the house for her, he left in their Lexus to drive around the area while Lahua contacted the police. Isaac stated he went to work on August 19th, 2021. He was scheduled to be off on August 20th. On August 21st, he woke up feeling ill. He went to an emergency room for treatment. He was seen for possible COVID symptoms. Isaac further stated that he took vacation from work for approximately two weeks from August the 21st to September the 7th as a result of the doctor visit. Isaac denied any involvement in the disappearance of Ariel. On September 13th, video surveillance was recorded from the Kalua residence. Ariel was last seen on the surveillance cameras on August 18th. On November the 5th at about 1.30 p.m., Detective Shane Iwamoto conducted a recorded interview with 12-year-old IMK, or Big Sister. She related the following information. She was asked to keep a secret by Lahua and Isaac regarding what happened to Ariel. Big Sister stated the secret 
was that Ariel was in the bathroom, in a dog cage, duct tape on her mouth and nose, and she didn't wake up. Big Sister stated she was asked to keep that secret around two months ago, and that she knows Ariel is dead because she was there. Big Sister stated she was there because her parents woke her up. After being awakened, she went into the bathroom and saw that Ariel had duct tape on her nose and mouth and was not breathing. Lahua then filled the bathtub with water and put Ariel in it to see if she would wake up, but it didn't work. Big Sister then had to help carry Ariel to their bedroom. A few days later, Isaac went to Kaiser, it's a medical clinic, to pretend that he was COVID. Big Sister stated she knew Isaac was pretending because she knows he took off work to help mom. When asked why would Isaac need to help mom, she stated to get rid of the stuff, evidence. She stated that when Lahua bought the dog cage via the internet, she was there. The family did not have a dog at the time. Big Sis stated that Lahua bought the dog cage because little Ariel would sneak around at night and want to eat because she was hungry. Six-year-olds don't eat unless they're hungry, y'all. Big Sister stated Ariel would be hungry because Lahua would not feed her. Big Sister would try to sneak food to Ariel on occasions but Lahua would catch them and become upset. So Lahua bought the cage to keep Ariel inside of it at night. Lahua put duct tape on Ariel plenty of times because she would sneak around and eat. Y'all, these people are driving a stinking Lexus and they can't feed this baby girl. This is not about money. It's about cruelty and control. I hope Lehua and Sunny get to starve a little in prison. Big Sister stated she believes the duct tape came from Sunny's job and that Sunny had seen both Big Sister and Ariel tied up with duct tape on other occasions and did nothing. A check of 911 calling systems showed there was no call made to 911 dispatch from August the 1st to September the 12th from either Lehua or Isaac regarding an emergency at their home. Search warrants were received on October the 15th, 2021, and the police received medical records from numerous health centers. The records included the time period from February 2019 to September 13th, 2021. None of the records received included any visits by Ariel to either the emergency rooms or the respective health centers during the time period between August the 1st and September the 13th. Surveillance video recovered from the residence on September the 13th showed other members of the family, including Lehua, Isaac, big sister, younger sister, and baby sister around the residence at various times after August the 18th and all the way up to and including September the 13th. There are so many infuriating things about these foster monsters. If you have ever worked in customer service, you learn how important it is to use someone's name it makes people feel valued. How does it make you feel when someone who should remember you forgets your name? It feels bad. As Ariel's seventh birthday approached on November the 6th, her grandmother, Kuma, recalled lovingly how Ariel, full of personality, would always introduce herself to visitors that she didn't know saying, I am Ariel. And Kuma added, if you played along with her and called her something else like Tinkerbell, 
she would always say, no, I'm Ariel. Ariel's name meant something to her. The Kaluas obviously felt like this little girl hadn't already lost enough. They even stripped her of the title her mom had given her on the day she was born. Ariel's body still has not been found, so maybe the Kaluas can find one scraggly shred of decency and tell the police where to find the remains of this precious baby girl. So her parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, and precious sisters can put her to rest and find some closure in this horrible story. Ariel's aunt, Lana Adeo, is considering legal action against state officials for not keeping her niece safe. That was a tough one to do. When I started this one, there was some hope. It was kind of like Cleo Smith's case. I was hoping, because as I start these, I always say a prayer, and as I'm working on them, I say a prayer. And I was working on this one when the Kaluas got arrested. It just, it broke my heart when the details about the dog cage started coming out. That's just really hard to even, hard to even fathom. But I just hope and pray that her remains can be found and give her family some closure, her real family, her family that loved her. I just pray that through all of this, that those sisters can at least have a better life and that they'll be more guarded. I'm, I know that wherever they go, um, Judy Harding is their paternal grandmother and she really seemed to want them. Never even knew that, that they needed a home. One good thing, there is a hero to this story. She has a name, but we don't really want that to get out because she will have a laugh other than this and she needs to be able to get away from this and she's gonna struggle it's gonna be very hard on that precious baby but she is a hero and i hope every moment she realizes what a hero she is she had to endure some horrible things way more than any 12 year old should ever have to that she is Ariel's hero. We would have, it would have been a lot harder to know exactly what went on and we probably would have never known exactly what went on without the words of this courageous 12 year old. Second degree murder in Hawaii, they can't get first degree, but they can get life without possibility of parole, even with second degree since Ariel was under eight years old. So they can still be tried for, with second degree murder, they can still get life without the possibility of parole. And that's what they deserve. That's what we need for these people. They don't really deserve life, but they at least do not deserve freedom. They do not deserve freedom. So that's what I'm praying for, that they, that justice is served and that they have to think every moment of what they did. I just, I don't understand why you would reach out. I know people say it was for money, but that's just evil. Why would you reach out and go ahead and adopt a child that you don't even want? I, I can't even fathom that. I don't even understand it. Why did they do that? All I can think is vile, evil people. That's, that's what they are. They are vile, evil, horrible, despicable people. And they deserve to be put into the prison and never, ever see the light of day again. Hope y'all have a great weekend and a wonderful holiday. And remember, count your blessings because we all have them. God is good and God is great. And I just pray that that we will remember all of our blessings. All right. See y'all on my next case. Bye-bye.